What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and once in a while I'll throw in a list as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our list. Today we're going to be ranking the Island Distilleries. Stick around. All right, so we're back with another list today. We're doing the Island Distilleries this time. Uh, the last time I did a list like this, I did the Isla Distilleries and I ranked those. I thought that video would be a lot more controversial than it ended up being. So let's see if our Island video goes just as smoothly. Before we get started, please note that I'll be discussing the official bottlings from these distilleries only. Uh, the last time I made a video like this, people were saying, yeah, okay, their core range isn't great but their IBs are fantastic and that is often the case. There's a lot of whiskey distilleries out there with just an okay core range, but they make some fantastic independent bottlings. Uh, those will not be the subject of today's video. Today we're just looking at the core ranges. Also, I'll only be discussing distilleries whose whiskeys I've actually tried before, uh, which means there's going to be a bunch of stuff that gets left out. There's a bunch of new distilleries that are popping up in the islands these days and I just haven't tried them all. So stuff like your Tora Vegas from the Isle of Skye, I haven't had that before. I haven't had anything from the Rasse Distillery or the Avenger Distillery. These are all new distilleries. They don't have a full line of mature whiskeys out yet, and I haven't had a single drop of whiskey from any of them. So again, they will not be included. Which is why I tacked 2021 onto the title of this video. Videos like this always reflect a specific moment in time uh, down the line. Not only will I have tried more of these newer whiskeys from these newer distilleries, I hope, but I might have to shuffle around the distilleries that I did include on the list. Obviously taste change, the quality of the whiskey might change, all that jazz. Now I'll be ordering this list from my least favorite to my most favorite? Yeah, my most favorite. And um, I'll also be including my top picks from each of these distilleries. Also stick around after the list and I'll let you know what's in my glass over here. I have a beautiful island whiskey sitting in my Glen Cairn, so stay tuned, I'll let you know what that is. And yeah, with all that said, why don't we hop into our list, why don't we rank our island distilleries, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So I have something of a tie to kick off our list, I kind of lumped number 5 and number 6 together. And the reason I did that is that these are two distilleries that I don't really buy much from. Uh, I'm not really familiar with their current lineups, so I just kind of stuck them together. And the reason I have them so low down on the list is because I have actually tried their whiskeys before, and I remember not being particularly impressed with them. Uh, the two distilleries I'm talking about here are Jura and Scapa. I know these are brands that do have their fans, but sorry, they've never really done much for me. Now Scapa used to have a 16 year old expression, but that one I think has since been discontinued. It never really blew me away. Since then they put out a couple of newer releases. One's called the Skirin and the other one is called the Glansa, I believe. Um, I haven't tried them. They both come in at 40%. They're chill filtered. I believe they're colored. They don't really appeal. And you know what? They might be good. I don't know. But with those specs and the price tag that they're at, they're pretty low down on my shopping list. Um, the other brand we're looking at here is Jura. Jura is not especially well regarded in the whiskey world. Now they don't really make anything that bad or that offensive, but they don't really have anything that's especially interesting or inspired either. So I don't really have a top pick from either brand here. Um, I've heard the 21 year old Jura is decent. I don't know, uh, I've never tried it. And you know, I could be wrong here. If any of you can recommend any superstar whiskeys from either of these distilleries, I'm all ears. And you know, I wouldn't mind being proven wrong here. I'm always happy to try out a good whiskey. But for now, neither of these whiskeys give us consistent specs, nor do they have a particularly good track record. So for that reason, even though I haven't tried much from their current lineup, I'm still going to place them at the bottom of this list as a tie. Alright, so my number four on this list I think is pretty well known even outside of whiskey circles. They have a lot of products floating around in the market out there. Some of them are good, most of them are average. Coming from way up north on Orkney Island, we're talking about Highland Park here. I think this is a pretty good brand overall, although I think a lot of their potential is stifled. Um, a lot of their whiskeys are no age stated, a lot of them are very markety, very gimmicky, and they do get a lot of flack for that, I think rightly so, um, but they are capable of making very good whiskey. Standouts for me are going to be the full volume and the Dark Origins. Uh, dark Origins is going to be my top pick from them, uh, and I even have a soft spot for the 12 year old, which is 40%, chill filtered, colored, all that. 
Um, their core range has a bit of an all-rounder appeal, meaning you get a lot of very general scotchy flavors from them. You'll have some florals in there, you'll have some peach, some sherry, their whiskeys are often very gentle and approachable. They're often referred to as the Johnny Walker of single malts, and I guess that's fair. Um, but once in a while they'll put something out with a bit more weight or a bit more complexity to it. Anyway, I do like their house style, I like their sherry, I like their heathery peat, but I do think a lot of the releases are a little bit too generic. I think, again, there's a lot of potential being wasted up there on Orkney, which is why this distillery sits a little bit lower on the list. Coming in at number four, we've got Highland Park. All right, so my next pick here is another well-regarded, very famous brand, uh, where Highland Park has their peat go in a more sort of like floral and heathery direction. These guys have their peat go in a more rocky, maybe minerally direction. Uh, for the longest time, they were the only distillery on the Isle of Skye, although that is no longer the case. Next up, we're looking at Talisker. Talisker is a pretty cool distillery. They have a house style that's like no other. Uh, they have gentle peat, they have coastal notes in there, you have some black pepper, and you have these rocky minerally notes in there, so it's very distinctive. Not only that, they keep a decent ABV across their entire range, and that's something that's pretty rare for Diageo products. Talisker does have quite a few expressions of note. First and foremost is going to be the 10 year old. That's going to be my top pick from the distillery. Uh, some other good expressions would be the DEs, the 18 year old, uh, the discontinued 57 North. All of them are good, but I think our 10 here perfectly captures the essence of Talisker. Another nice thing about this brand is that they're consistent. The Taliskers that you get today are basically on the same level in terms of quality as the stuff that I was buying like 10 or 12 years ago back when I was getting started with whiskey. So they're consistent, they have a good house style. Yeah, coming in at number three, Talisker. All right, our next distillery is kind of a two-in-one. Uh, they have a peated line and they have an unpeated line, kind of like uh, Brooklady on Isla. And like Brooklady, I tend to gravitate more towards the peated line. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have figured out what we're talking about by now. Number two is going to be Tobermory. Now I'm going to say this up front, if it weren't for their peated line, which is called Lejig or Ledjig, this brand would be appearing a lot lower on the list. Uh, Tobermory does have a nice 12 year old and they do have some decent wine matured or finished expressions, but on the whole it's a mixed bag. Lejig, on the other hand, can pretty much do no wrong in my book. Uh, now they don't have much in the way of core range, it's basically just their 10 year old and their 18 year old but both of those are absolute standouts in their category. Either one of them could have been my top pick, but I guess I'm gonna go with the 18 today. Uh, the 18, in my opinion, one of the best 18 year olds on the market today, reasonably priced. We have Big Pete in there, Big Sherry, some really interesting and funky flavors, just awesome stuff. Much like Tobermory, they do have a few one-offs and special editions, but they tend to be pretty expensive and I haven't tried any of them. There's also a Rioja cast finished expression, haven't tried that one either. It's basically just the 10 and the 18 holding it all together for me. And based on the Jig and almost the Jig alone, I'm putting Tobermory as my number two on this list. So by process of elimination, I'm sure a lot of you might have already figured out what our top distillery is here. Um, this is a relatively new distillery. It only got started in the 90s, but over the last maybe decade or so, it's seen a pretty meteoric rise, and it's now one of the most respected brand names in the whiskey world. I'm talking about Aaron. Now, Aaron is not a perfect distillery. They do have some duds and some misfires, but those are the exceptions and not the rule. Um, they have a barrel reserve release, which comes in at 43%. But that one aside, everything they produce is going to be craft presented, meaning they're going to come in at 46% ABV or higher, they're going to be non-chill filtered and naturally colored. Not only do they care about craft, they're usually pretty transparent as well, they share a fair amount of info with their consumers, and they make damn good whiskey. Now I've said this in the past, and this is kind of a general statement that applies to most, if not all distilleries. But for Aaron in particular, I do feel like they're at their best when they have an age statement. Uh, the 10 and the 18 year old are both fantastic whiskeys. As was the now discontinued 14 year old, that was a great one, very sad to see that one go. Now I haven't gotten around to reviewing the 21 yet, but I do hope to down the line, although it is pretty expensive. Their no age stated stuff can be a mixed bag, but some of them are really good. Uh, all of them are craft presented, but I think my top pick from the distillery is going to be the 10 year old. Uh, I think the 10 year old is an excellent whiskey, it's got some great complexity for its age. And you know, I reviewed that one a while back and I gave it an 86 and I kind of want to update that. I'd probably put it more around 87 or 88 these days. The 18 is also a killer and if I'm being honest, that one is my favorite from the range, but I just want to talk about the 10 a little bit so I could update my score there. Uh, they're also building a new distillery. They've already built a new distillery on the Isle of Arran. That one's called Lag. 
that one's gonna be putting out some peated whiskey down the line so that's something else to look forward to so yeah Aaron uh, as far as I'm concerned they're killing it over there um, when I first got into whiskey maybe 10 12 years ago their stuff was pretty sharp it was kind of unrefined but in that time I've seen them evolve into one of the top players in the modern whiskey scene um, so yeah they make awesome stuff number one Aaron All right, that's it for my ranking of island distilleries. I'm keen to hear what you guys think of my list, or also maybe you could give me your own list. You could put those down in the comments. I'd be interested in reading those as well. Also, fill me in on some of the distilleries I missed out on. Stuff like Torre Vague, Rase, have you tried those yet? What were your thoughts on those? Um, also, I know a lot of you stuck around to find out what's in my glass over here. I am drinking the Aaron 18 year old. Uh, it didn't make my top pick, but I did tell you it's my favorite from the range. Awesome stuff. And yeah, that's about it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.